They say that trends are cyclical. However, this usually refers to cultural trends like hoop skirts or the brief resurgence of swing music. Normally, technology isn't seen as quite so cyclical, especially when it comes to technologies that are considered to be pretty darn obsolete. You're unlikely to see city streets gridlocked by the abundance of horse-drawn carriages or to enlist in the army only to spend basic training practicing your balance formation. But there is one seemingly outdated technology that's currently on the rise, and that's airships. After dominating the skies for 85 years, airships became a relic of the past following the 1937 crash of the Hindenburg. Investors screamed, oh, the humanity, as they watched their entire industry erupt in a ball of flames. Of course, airships never completely went away. They continued to be used in a very limited military capacity, and the Goodyear blimpers graced America's skies for nearly a century, promoting brand awareness and taking incredible aerial photos of sporting events. So, if this technology is considered dangerous, outdated, and most importantly, completely obsolete thanks to airplanes, why are companies suddenly racing to build new fleets of airships? When most people think of airships, there are likely only three things that come to mind. They will either conjure a mental image of their Goodyear blimp, or the fiery explosion of the Hindenburg, or of some alternate steampunk universe. They don't feel like something that has any place in our modern society, except as a cute novelty. And there's a good reason for that. Airships are really slow. Even if the Hindenburg hadn't burnt up, the writing was on the wall for airships as a form of transportation. A transatlantic Zeppelin flight could take over a week, but a plane can go from Boston to London in under seven hours. Airships were faster and often more luxurious than traveling by boat, but planes offered both a fast and economical solution for commercial passengers. However, there is still an avenue where airships could make a huge impact. And that is freight shipping. There are currently four main methods of freight shipping. Planes, trains, boats, and trucks. Planes are naturally the fastest, with cargo planes traveling at around 900 kilometers or 560 miles per hour. But planes also don't carry that much cargo. While there are some massive cargo planes in use, a typical cargo plane can carry 15 to 40 tons of cargo. Compare that to trucks, which can carry 20 to 25 tons each, or ships that can carry tens of thousands of tons, and we see that the only advantage of air freight is the speed. Speed certainly can be important, but most goods that are using freight shipping don't need to get to their destination in any particular hurry. This is why the overwhelming majority of freight is shipped using trucks. If it weren't for all those damn oceans getting in the way and requiring companies to use cargo ships, trucks would almost certainly have an even bigger share of the global freight market. This is because trucks exist in that perfect Goldilocks zone of price versus performance. They aren't nearly as fast as the 900 kilometers an hour of a plane, but at at least 100 to 120 kilometers an hour, they're still much faster than cargo ships, which travel at only 22 to 37 kilometers an hour. Trucks also aren't restricted by things like airports, docks, and waterways, giving them a greater overall area that they can serve. Now, to put some numbers to this, shipping the same cargo over the same distance would cost $85 to get it by plane the same day, $11 to get it by truck in a few days, or $2 by boat to get it when you get it. It all comes down to how quickly you need to get your shipments. And in most cases, the $11 option is the ideal solution. So how exactly do airships fit into all of this? Airships can provide the same shipping speed as trucks, they can ship cargo across oceans, and best of all, they're cheaper to operate. Because the lift of an airship is generated by being filled with lighter-than-air gas, they produce what is often referred to as free lift. Sure, you yeah, had to buy the gas to fill your airship in the first place, but it doesn't get spent in the same way that fuel does. That source of free lift remains there, helping to drive down the operating costs. Not only is the free lift great for cutting down on operating costs, but it makes airships a great way to cut down on carbon emissions. It's estimated that freight shipping using airships instead of traditional methods would reduce the emissions associated with shipping those materials by 90%, which is the main factor pushing airships back into the public consciousness. The ships will require engines to provide thrust and maneuverability, so they wouldn't be completely carbon-free, though there are also potential plans to utilize solar panels to further reduce the consumption of traditional fuel. Another big advantage, since the goal is to haul extremely heavy quantities of cargo, is that the bigger an airship is, the better its performance will be. Now, this is because of the square cube law in mathematics. 
This law states that as an object increases in size, its volume increases at a greater rate. So if you had a cube and you tripled the length of each side, the surface area would increase by a factor of 3 squared, while the volume would increase by a factor of 3 cubed. This is important for the airship's efficiency because drag is governed by the ship's surface area, while lift is governed by its volume. More drag is bad, and more lift is good, but increasing the size of the airship will always generate more lift than it does drag. Of course, this just makes it more mathematically efficient once you have an operational airship. Somebody still needs to build the damn thing first. But before we get to that, there is one major advantage of airships over other forms of shipping, and that's that they can go anywhere. Ships require waterways. Trucks require roads, and airplanes require airstrips that are multiple kilometers long, both to take off and land. Airships don't require any of that. They can take off from anywhere and travel to any location so long as there is a relatively flat surface to land on. The area of flat terrain doesn't even need to be that big, just slightly bigger than the airship itself, and that surface can even be water. Thanks to air cushion landing systems, a set of four cushions on the bottom of an airship that basically look like inflatable donuts, it's easy for an airship to land and dock literally anywhere. This would allow airships to bring cargo to and from remote locations that might not otherwise be reachable. Large quantities of ore could be shipped directly from a remote mine, and logs could be shipped from forests that don't have access to roads. These airships could also bring supplies and aid to difficult-to-reach locations all over the world with ease. So, well, if these things are just so bloody fantastic, why isn't the sky teeming with a new era of dirigibles already? So far, airships seem like a really great option to provide a cleaner and more cost-effective means of shipping. Unfortunately, though, there are still several hurdles involved before this could become a real possibility. First, there's the cost. While the operating costs of a fleet of airships should be low, the startup costs are immense. In order to be cost efficient to operate, it's projected that each airship needs to be able to carry 500 to 1,000 tons of cargo. From a technological standpoint, that's fine. We already discussed how making airships bigger just makes them more efficient anyway. However, Building these ships would be an extremely costly endeavor. Each airship would need to be at least 360 meters long, making them the largest flying aircraft in the world. These airships would be so large that there isn't actually anywhere to build them. The world's largest hangar is smaller than the proposed airship would need to be, which means that whoever wanted to undertake this endeavor would first need to build a hangar that could house the airship before building the ship itself. It's either that, or just try to build the thing outdoors and hope that it doesn't get destroyed by the weather. Which it, you know, absolutely would. This wouldn't just be a single airship either. Sure, a company could start with one to use as a proof of concept, but having a single vehicle wouldn't be enough to convince people to switch to airship cargo. In order to provide reliable shipping options, it would take a fleet of thousands of these airships. And if it proves successful, it's estimated that it would take at least 25,000 Zeppelins to service the world's shipping demands. That means building a lot of airships, which means building a lot of hangars in which to build those airships. This is absolutely doable, and constructing all of this wouldn't present any novel engineering challenges. But what it would take is somebody willing to invest an absolutely incredible amount of money with no guarantee that the industry would ever take off. Now, there are multiple companies already looking into this, but so far nobody has been willing to attempt anything close to a full-scale freight operation. Another major problem is the airship's lift. The fact that ships use lighter-than-air gases to provide free lift is supposed to be one of their biggest advantages, but it's also one of the biggest issues. After all, that lift is always there. You can't just turn off helium gas. That doesn't mean that landing an airship is an issue. There are multiple ways to do this that have long since been figured out. But the simplest is to inflate a pair of balloonettes on either side of the ship with air. As the balloonettes fill, they reduce the volume available for the helium gas. This causes it to become more dense and reduce the overall lift. That's a perfectly fine solution for getting to the ground. Airships fly at low altitude, so the lift would need to be reduced dramatically. And most important of all, all the helium is still inside the airship, it's just more densely packed. However, once our cargo airship reached the ground, unloading it would present a problem. If you removed 500 tons of cargo from the airship, it would become very buoyant and try to soar back into the sky. Now, there are a few possible ways to deal with this, though none are particularly ideal. The simplest solution is just to release some of the helium gas. It would be easy but it's also the worst possible solution. Helium is really expensive, 
and it's not a renewable resource. There is no chemical process by which we can create helium, and it is so light that it can escape Earth's atmosphere entirely. Not only would it cost six figures every time helium was released to prevent a cargo airship from floating away while unloading, but it would further deplete the total helium available to us. That's pretty bad, but what if there was a similarly low-tech solution that wasn't nearly as expensive? And there is, which is just to, you know, add more weight to the airship. If you want to remove 500 tons of cargo from the airship, first just load another 500 tons of cargo onto it, or in the absence of other cargo at this location, just fill it with 500 tons of water barrels. It might feel like a lot of work, but it's certainly a better solution than the first option. There's also the possibility of using compressors to condense the helium, making it too dense to give the airship lift. While this is often discussed as a possibility, the technology seems to be in the experimental phase. Air compressors obviously exist already, but one powerful enough to suit this exact purpose may currently be out of reach. Of all the available options, the most appealing is to create a hybrid airship rather than the traditional Zeppelin-style airship. These are massive airships that utilize aerodynamics for lift rather than gaining free lift for gases. Like normal airships, they rely on both conventional engines and lighter-than-air gases for propulsion, but because they are heavier than air, they still need forward momentum in order to maintain aerodynamic lift. Hybrid ships would still dramatically reduce carbon emissions, though the requirements of aerodynamic lift would mean that most designs couldn't float in place. While the ability to stall in the air would be a nice feature to have, realistically, it's just not that important for airships being used to ship cargo. There are several proposed advantages of hybrid airships, not the least of which is their ability to stay grounded when you want them to. They can also fly faster and higher than traditional airships, and it's expected that they would be able to carry more cargo as well. The US military even built one of these hybrid airships at a cost of between $150 and $500 million, depending on various estimates. Originally built by British manufacturer Hybrid Air Vehicle, and developed to be used for intelligence surveillance, the project was scrapped by the military in 2013. Not wanting to let a good design go to waste, HAV has refitted it for civilian use and expects it to be available for commercial flights as early as 2026. They also gave the ship the affectionate nickname, the Flying Bum, on account of its distinct and uh, unmistakable shape. And that currently seems to be the direction that airships are taking, not the part about being shaped like human butts, but the part about it being used for commercial flights. Calculations predict that airships would be an exceptional alternative to current methods of shipping, and they could even be crewless vehicles to further reduce costs. However, because the startup cost to create such an industry is so massive, companies are instead turning towards using airships for luxury commercial travel. There are several different companies developing luxury airships, such as Ocean Sky Cruisers in Sweden. Each of their 36-hour flights will take its passengers from Norway to the North Pole and back at a cruising altitude of 1,000 feet. The first sold-out flight is scheduled for February 2024, and the cost per cabin is $200,000. Not all future airships will be scenic tours like this, and many oh, will indeed be intended to take passengers from point A to point B. But the lowest projected cost that we can find at the time of writing is $75,000 per passenger. Since these operations only require a single luxury airship, the entry cost is far lower than trying to create a Zeppelin shipping company, which has made it much more attractive to investors. And now there's still one thing we haven't really addressed yet with regards to lighter than air travel, which is what lighter than air gas we should be using. Now, throughout this episode, we've assumed all vehicles were using helium, both because that is what the current plans entail and because it's what people generally want. But hydrogen is an option as well, and is it really that bad? Look, we've all seen the spectacular footage of the Hindenburg erupting into a massive ball of flames, but what really happened that day? Sure, the Zeppelin exploded and killed 35 passengers and one person on the ground, but what about all the people who didn't die? We don't want to diminish that tragic loss of life, but people often assume that everybody on board died, not realizing that there were 62 survivors of the tragedy. You probably didn't notice because you were so distracted by the flames, but in the footage of the disaster, you can even see dozens of people fleeing from the flaming wreckage to safety. By contrast, the deadliest airship crash of all time was the USS Akron in 1933. Being an American airship, the Akron was filled with helium rather than hydrogen, but that crash left 73 dead, with only three survivors. While the Hindenburg wasn't the only airship to explode, sudden explosions weren't the main cause of airship accidents. Ships often crashed, were often destroyed in unrelated hangar fires, or were carelessly flown into power lines. Surprisingly often, airships involved in accidents didn't even have anybody on board. Airships were often tethered to mooring masts on the ground rather than being stored in hangars, but high winds would cause them to break free and crash into things with surprising frequency. 
Hydrogen certainly has its risks, since it's extremely flammable, but it does have a lot of advantages as well. It's cheaper, it's easier to produce, and it's lighter than helium. That means a smaller hydrogen airship could have the same lift as a larger helium one. It's true to say that being filled with hydrogen was the cause of many of the airship accidents of the past. But in the majority of accidents, it wasn't a factor. The available data seems to suggest that the real issue was that the entire industry was somewhat carelessly run. For people's peace of mind, it's probably safe to assume that future luxury passenger airships will continue to use helium. At $200,000 per ticket, the companies can certainly afford it. But if cargo airships are to become a reality, hydrogen may be the way to go. Modern designs and technology should be able to greatly reduce the possibility of another Hindenburg disaster. And since we have the technology to control fleets of cargo airships that wouldn't even need a crew on board, it nearly eliminates the chance that a ship exploding would result in a loss of life. Just as long as it doesn't happen to fall on you, that is.